Good morning, everybody. I'd like to share briefly about my recent experiences in Africa. I decided to go to Zambia because Mother had asked us to educate 43 people at least of the tribe, our 430 families that we had blessed. So as I had, about five years ago, I had myself gone to Zambia and I had blessed 72 families there. I decided to visit Zambia. To, I wanted to help have all organize a workshop where 43 people of my tribe could be educated. And also I wanted, I had been invited to visit Zimbabwe by the couple responsible for tribe Messiah outreach there, inviting me to visit Zimbabwe and the, promising to take me to visit Archbishop Ndanga as I knew I wanted to ask him about blessing his members in the north of England, which I am keen to do because I think it will make a good condition for Britain if we can bless many people in the churches in North England and make a good condition for Christianity in this country. So I worked with a couple, Evelyn and uh, William Mfrembi, who had the responsibility for tribe Messiah, overseeing tribe Messiah activities in that area, centered on the town of Mpika, which was nine hours by bus going to Mpika from the Saka, coming back it took us 12 hours. One, one interesting, curious incident was that both there and coming back, halfway we stopped in the bush and we all had to go to the toilet in the grass in the bush. <laughs> but it wasn't so bad because the grass was very thick and very tall and you couldn't see the people. But anyway, it was amusing for me to be doing that. But it was better than going. Some of the toilets there in the country towns are, are very smelly. But they worked hard. They organized four mobilizers to go around visiting all the people that I had blessed. Uh, unfortunately, only one out of the 72 people came, but new people came. And just as an interesting note, the highest virtue of Africans is humility, which was seen as weakness in the past by Europeans, but actually it's a great strength and it's a humility from the heart. It's not just external bowing and to each other and seeing who could bow the lowest. Also, they have a tradition of being obedient to their leaders, to their chiefs. So if one, if their leader is inviting them, that's why it's easy, they go. That's why it's easy to bless people in, in Africa and teach people divine principle and help have blessed couples. But they need to be educated and taken care of so they can become members and so they really understand the way of life of faith that true parents are teaching us. We were able to do three workshops. I was there for, for four days. We did one workshop in the to the villages where I was before, Kanungalila, where the water well borehole will be made. Also, that's where we hope to, I hope that to fund the building of a home for the pastor there, which will be used as a training center for members, for people in the local area to hear divine principle and to be blessed. Because it's expensive for people to go to Lusaka to attend workshops. We need to have a place in the country where many people can be able to hear principle and be able to understand true parents' heart and, and teachings. So then the next day we went to a village called Malamba, which I had paid to have the whole building painted. It had, since I lost, we lost blessed people, it's a community center, very big, but for some reason they didn't use it and they had been using it as a chicken pen and so they spent two days cleaning up all the chicken droppings and then painting all the walls so that was a good contribution to make to the community to leave them with a nice hall they could use for their services and weddings and parties and general community activities and the pastor that once us for whom the water well will be made the boho will be um, made asked us to go to his wife's village and so that was a place called Nkamba, where 120 people came to hear principle and 40, 41 couples were blessed. So I was glad that um, we were able to do that because that meant that 217 people had heard princ principle, heard about true parents, and also 68 couples were blessed. So that was, I think, a good 
contribution to make towards the spiritual development of Zambia and towards Africa. Then the next day, straight away, we traveled 12 hours from Mpika to Zambia, got home half past 10, and left, got up five o'clock the next morning to go to Harare, flew to Harare, and uh, spent a few days with, um, with Lynn and Basaka Ayulangoma, who are responsible for our tribal Masai outreach in Zimbabwe. And they, Basaka and the national leader, Reverend um, Shut, took me to see Archbishop Ndanga, and we could make arrangements for him to come to Britain. To do, he, must, he will do a workshop for his bishops and pastors, and then we will bless his members. So I was happy that we could do that. Also, I would like to help with the development of the providence there. Um, the one uh, pastor, three pastors who helped me uh, last time I was there, were there again supporting me, Reverend Karen, Pastor Mary, and Reverend Chaluba. Reverend Karen wants to build an orphanage. So I want to help her, I want to raise the money. We only need a thousand pounds to be able to build a good orphanage. And they make their own bricks, all they need to buy is cement. And um, also I would like to help Zimbabwe, their, their economic situation, as you know, is very, uh, very difficult. Recently, there was a bit of a collapse in the economy. And as there are only 10 families in Harare, they don't have much money and only one family in Bulawayo. So I'd like to help them to be able to improve the peace embassy that they have where they arrange workshops and teach people principle. It's a lovely building externally, but it needs maintenance, it needs painting and needs to be um, improved so it can be of a better standard but they don't really have the money for that so I'd like to help them with that and we need the centre in that area in Mpika where the local people can hear principal especially young people well, many young people came to hear principal by the way because it's too expensive and too far for them to go to Lusaka to attend workshops they really need to have a place in the country where people can go to hear principal and hear about two parents. So that's why I would like to help that pastor Chaluba to build a big house, bigger that he was going to build two rooms house. How does nine people live in a house of two rooms? I don't know. But I told him he's going to build a big house and then we said well, he was also willing to build a venti room where they could be able to teach divine principle. Also he's very keen. I told him you know I had to start blessing 430 himself. But he has to go on a uh, three-day workshop to soccer to learn more deeply about divine principle and to learn about the bless significance of blessing more deeply and to be anointed to be able to give the blessing. Also, his daughter is planning, she's 20, Miriam, she's planning to go to the soccer to join, to become a member. So that was good to be able to leave Zambia knowing that there will at least be one new young full member joining the church in the soccer. So I was very grateful to go there. Also, I heard, had heard that when you have difficulty spiritually, it's very good to go to the home of your birth. So I, the last few months have been very difficult for me. Beginning of the year, so many things went wrong in my life. Everything that could go wrong, in fact, did go wrong. So, but after going to Africa, somehow I feel it's true. When you go to the place of your birth, somehow there is some new uh, like you feel like reborn somehow, new life coming. And even I had some experiences with Hong Jinlam on the plane, the one who was who uh, went around, who was in a corpus body, if you remember, in the late 80s. And I had been praying for my heart to be more open, more compassionate, more sensitive to people and to Heavenly Father. And I, when I was praying, I suddenly felt him there. And I really felt some movement, some change in my heart. It was very, very, very amazing. But I really felt some change. And even Lady Doc, like Miss Young and Kim, um, she used to be responsible for Europe when I joined. And I felt her presence saying, if you really want to influence people and really help our true parents work, I should pray for one hour every day. So I really felt like a new, new, passion, new hope, new energy, new um, feeling of commitment and really wanting to do God's work. And even this morning, yesterday actually, I was praying. I've always wanted to 
have a closer relationship with God. That's why I taught, joined, because I wanted to make God more real to people. But you know, if your relationship with God is not real, you cannot teach people or help people to develop a real relationship. And I always struggled with that because coming from a Christian background, somehow I always felt unworthy. God is so powerful, so holy, and I always felt unworthy to really have a relationship with God. But just yesterday, I felt, I just suddenly felt a warm presence around me, and, and I felt Mother God was saying, I love you unconditionally, no matter what you do, I love you, you're my child. And that gave me so much hope that I don't have to prove myself, I don't have to be a good person before God loves me. I don't have to become perfect, but God just loves me unconditionally as I am. And that has given me so much hope. I feel I have something to share now, that our mother God loves us unconditionally. And just as we are, we don't, we, but then because you know your love, then you want to pray, you want to uh, do more, you want to, it's easier. Anyway, I just want to share that. Thank you.